It was an extraordinary three years of progress and renewal, rebuilding our military, reviving our economy. And then the coronavirus pandemic struck our nation. But President Trump took unprecedented action. He put the health and safety of America first from the very earliest days. Before the month of January was over, the President suspended all travel from China, stood up the White House Coronavirus Task Force. In fact, since the days that follows, we, we've not only developed a whole-of-government approach, but a whole-of-America approach. We've marshaled the full resources of America to save lives, protect the vulnerables, and to support the extraordinary work of doctors and nurses across this country. And I'll make you a promise, as we continue to respond to this coronavirus pandemic, we're going to work 24 hours a day to ensure that all of our states impacted, all of our hospitals and all of those great health care workers have the supplies and the resources they need to give every American the same level of care that we would want a member of our family to have. We're meeting this moment with American compassion and American resolve. And we're also opening up America again. It's extraordinary to think at the height of this pandemic, our economy had lost 22 million jobs. But because of that strong foundation that President Trump laid of less taxes, less regulation, in two short months, May and June saw record-breaking job creation. We've already added 7 million jobs back to the American economy, and we're just getting started. <laughs> but we all know, my fellow Americans, that we are passing through a time of testing for the American people. But soon we will come to a time for choosing, which is what brings me here today. In 110 days, the American people have a choice to make. And the choice has never been clearer, and the stakes have never been higher. I came here to the city of Ripon, Wisconsin, where the Republican Party was born, to describe that choice. You know, when that first convention met here in 1854, they wrote that their decision to found a new political party had been, and I quote, forced upon us by the slave power and in the defense of freedom. They said they would cooperate and be known as Republicans. And so they have ever been. Six years later, they elected the first Republican president who ushered in the abolition of slavery and the advancement of our highest ideals. And four months from now, I know our party will re-elect another Republican president when we re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years in the White House. But it's why I'm here today, to talk about what's at stake and to talk about the choice our nation faces. Our economic recovery is on the ballot, but also are things far more fundamental and foundational to our country. You know, it's not so much whether America will be more conservative or more liberal, more Republican or Democrat, more red or blue. It's whether America remains America. It's whether we will leave to our children and our grandchildren a country grounded in our highest ideals of freedom, free markets, and the unalienable right to life and liberty, or whether we will leave to our children and grandchildren a country that is fundamentally transformed into something else. Like those first Republicans, we stand at a crossroads of freedom. Before us are two paths one based on the dignity of every individual and the other on the growing control of the state. Our road leads to greater freedom and opportunity. Their road leads to socialism and decline. President Trump set our nation on a path to freedom and opportunity from the very first day of this administration.
But Joe Biden would set America on a path of socialism and decline. America is a blessed and exceptional country, unique among the nations. We've been an asylum of hope for millions around the world, yearning to breathe free as the words on the Statue of Liberty declare. Many of our greatest citizens have come from corners of the world ruled by socialist regimes. If you ever doubt whether this country is special and unique, just talk to one of them. Before this pandemic, President Trump set our nation on that path of freedom and opportunity for every American, regardless of race or creed or color. America's families enjoyed record low crime rates, record high prosperity, the safety and security of a government devoted to law-abiding citizens in this country. But now all of that is under threat. Joe Biden has referred to himself as a transition candidate. But many were asking across this country, a transition to what? And now we have the answer. Recently, Joe Biden combined forces with the socialist Bernie Sanders and the radical left wing of the Democratic Party. And we don't need to guess where they're planning to take America. Biden and Sanders recently released a document from their unity task force outlining their agenda for the country. And reading that document, you know, I, I thought Joe Biden won the Democrat primaries, but looking at their unity agenda, it looks to me like Bernie won. When you look at their agenda, the only thing that ended up unifying was Joe Biden to the radical left. Contrary to their radical agenda, President Trump is rebuilding this economy based on freedom and free markets and the rule of law. The American people know. President Donald Trump did it once before, and President Donald Trump will do it again. <laughs> At the root of the Biden-Sanders agenda, is a belief that America is driven by envy, not aspiration. That millions of Americans harbor ill will toward our neighbors instead of loving our neighbors as ourselves. The radical left believes the federal government must be involved in every aspect of our lives to correct those American wrongs. They believe the federal government needs to dictate how Americans live, how we should work, how we should raise our children, and in the process, deprive our people of freedom, prosperity, and security. Their agenda is based on government control. Our agenda is based on freedom. I mean, just look at the contrast between our record and the Biden agenda. President Trump cut taxes by $5.5 trillion, the largest tax cut and reform in American history. <laughs> Joe Biden plans to increase taxes by nearly $4 trillion over the next decade alone, twice as much as Hillary Clinton ever proposed. President Trump not only cut taxes, but we've, we've rolled back federal red tape at a historic pace. This president has actually repealed more federal regulations than any president in American history, enabling our economy to add nearly 8 million jobs in the last two months alone. Joe Biden, 